welcome to the first video on Karma Speed YouTube channel. We're building a team here. We got Randall here and myself, and we're excited to do a full stereo install. Randall's gonna go ham. Randall, is this gonna be easy for you? Pretty easy. Is this something you could do at home yourself? Definitely. How did you learn doing this? I learned doing it by doing it, basically. It's, it's in a nutshell. That's kind of how I've learned most of the things that I know. Learn by doing, mess up, break stuff, kind of learn from your mistakes. But with this, I find a lot of joy in wiring. It takes me a little longer than the average guy, but I spend a lot of time to the attention to detail stuff. So that's typically why it takes me a little longer, but it turns out good in the end. That's what it's all about. The goal of this video is to show you a full transformation of the stereo. Maybe if Randall sees some little tips and tricks, he can pause and show you. Other than that, we're gonna fly through this, unbox these parts, and and get a rad sound system in this 2004 Silverado right behind us. never installed a stereo before what is each one of these things very quickly so right here this is our subwoofer this puts out all of our low frequency sounds right here these are our component speakers all your mids and highs go through all these speakers right here is your head unit this is the main source your display where you see everything where all the signals are sent out to the amplifier which then the signals that are received from the amplifier amplify those signals to essentially make sound that comes through your speakers and our wiring kit right here here, this is what takes power from your battery and sends that power to our amplifier here. In our RCA cables, we have three sets for this install. The RCAs will take the signal coming from your head unit and send them to the amplifier. RCAs carry your music, the data. Yep. So for what small wiring jobs like this, especially with audio connections, I like to use solder whenever possible. And the heat shrink that I use is from wirecare.com. They have a good selection of just about every size in different shrink ratios. They have three to one and two to one. I like this three to one here. It shrinks down pretty good. Provides a really good protection for the wire. <laughs> better yeah. so much more responsive I will say it looks a lot better than you know. Thank you. 
So we got our amp mounted and secured. So typically in your normal car stereo setup, you'll have an amp for if you're running a subwoofer. However, we're running one amp that's a five channel amp that's gonna power our speakers along with our sub. Instead of running new wires from all the doors, going back to the amp, I went ahead and tapped into this factory plug right here on our other side so we don't have to do deal with any of that. So that's what all this wire is right here. So I'm gonna run this down through the floorboard and then back to our amp over here. Then I'll cut it to length and then we'll get everything turned out. cutting all my wires to length to their final length of which they're gonna be terminated in this right here is my favorite part I'm not being sarcastic this is where the overall final look kind of comes into play with how your wiring looks mounted up against the amp Thanks so much for stopping by the Karma Speed channel. This is produced by our team. There's eight of us, but we want to tell you about something really, really quick. Karma Driving Club gets you a free t-shirt, 10% off everything, early access to items that might go out of stock, so you don't have to worry about that. Gets you grandfathered into every feature giveaway. Any feature we might add, you're into already. Every giveaway we do after this is gonna make the price go up, so we encourage you to go check out the Lifetime Membership. It helps us build our company, helps us build our team, so we can run free with our creative ideas and create an awesome company to support our automotive enthusiasts, our fellow people who love everything with engine and wheels so if you like that idea karmaspeed.com down in the description hit the subscribe button on this channel thanks so much for stopping by let's get back in the video appreciate you so right here we have our new 4x6 so i'm going to be soldering on the new connections only reason being is Sometimes these come loose, so I like to have a firm and secure connection that I know is not gonna come loose. So I'm gonna find our right size spade connector here. I think we'll be good with this guy right here. Might have to open it up a little bit. Side post batteries aren't typically ideal for running aftermarket equipment, for instance, like a stereo system like we're doing here. So you can do one of two things. You can either convert to a top post battery or what I'm gonna do today, I'm gonna attempt right on in here. We have our power brick that we have a nut and a stud right here. So I'm gonna take this nut off and then I'm gonna take my Dremel and carve out this bottom portion of it. Once this lid is closed, we can feed our wire down through the bottom is what I'm hoping for. So we'll see what I can get out of this. You want 
be very careful when you're heat shrinking on this mesh. If you use a torch, you can run the risk of actually melting through this this mesh and basically destroying your piece. So I like to use a heat gun, makes it a little bit easier. So another big thing to remember, if you have your power cable hooked up to a live power feed, you wanna make sure to disconnect your fuse here because whenever you're running this wire down through the cab, you don't want the end of that shorting out on any bare metal surface. So to eliminate that, we take out our fuse like so, and then we won't have any issues of it grounding out. So I'm using this little track right here to actually put the wire through. So if you see here, it fits pretty much perfect. So it makes your life a little easier. of the camera harness we have a power and ground that we have to hook up so our ground will go to any good ground on the chassis and our power wire is going to go to our power wire for our reverse lights so when the reverse lights turn on the camera knows when to send signal to the head unit so we're going to go ahead and pull out this tail light and figure out which side on our harness is power and which side is ground and we'll get all this hooked up So if you notice, these two ends right here that meet up, the only way they go in is they just push together. To me, that doesn't seem like a very great connection without any kind of clips or locks. So I'm gonna put some heat shrink around it. I mean, it's not gonna keep it from coming apart all the way, but it'll protect it and protect any moisture from slipping in to this connection here.
so now that we have our camera the harness for our backup camera all the way up here to the head unit we have this one red wire coming off and then our rca right here on our head unit we have a reverse gear signal input so this red wire is going to be connecting to this wire this pink or purple wire which then gives the head unit signal to emit the video on the screen here So the last piece to our puzzle has finally shown up. That is our sub box. So we'll go ahead and get this opened up and we'll get the sub put in here. So this box is a little bit different than your typical sub boxes for these extended cab trucks. Typically they go across the whole length of the seat. However, we wanted to maintain some storage under that seat for at least half of it. So that's why we went with this style right here. So here I'm gonna be making my wire that'll be going from the subwoofer to the pass-through connection on the box there. So it's just a short little connection here. You get a ferrule on here that'll go on the inside of the sub here. The connection soldered in so these are not going anywhere so now i'll go ahead and get the sub screwed into the box get our wires put in and then we'll go install it in the truck installed this whole thing with us and you're wondering does this thing bump oh yeah i got some uh music from our copyright free spot if i want my mirrors to shake for you guys i really got to turn it up loud and i don't want to have my neighbors come outside and ask me what the heck I'm doing, but it will do that. If you want something even punchier, just do two tens. If you want a super clean, all rounded system that's not too, too much, spend a couple grand on, this is like, will impress anybody. If you want punchier, do two subwoofers. If you want to save space, but have plenty of sound and have a really, really fun sound system, the one and a half to see with the Amazon link below, as far as the subwoofer setup goes, it's plenty, plenty loud. Door speakers sound clean. Focal speakers always sound really, really good. I've been around quite a few others and I always kind of draw back to the focals or focal, however you want to call it. So we have links in the description to everything. If you guys want to check out this head unit um, and everything about it, we did a comparison for $80 one compared to this $500 one. 
I will be keeping the $500 one in here forever. It was definitely worth it, but you can go kind of see why and kind of the drawbacks. I almost wanted to keep the cheaper one, but after some time, I definitely developed some things that I hated about it. So if you guys want to go check out that video, compare some Apple CarPlay units, we'll have it right here on my main channel, my personal page over here. Hit that subscribe button on the Karma Speed channel. Check out the links down below. They definitely help out the channel, but if you want to go see that comparison, click on the video right here. We'll see you over there. Thanks so much for stopping by the Karma Speed channel. We'll see you around.